stick in my mind. Uh, the first is learning to read at a young age, growing up in a small rural village on the north coast of KwaZulu-Natal. And I learned to read because my parents gave me that gift. And it's a gift that has stood me in good stead throughout my life. Growing up in a little rural village um, where in fact your horizons were circumscribed physically by just simply the hills around you. But what reading did was that it enabled me to imagine another world. It enabled me to rise above the hills of this village. And so at a very, very early age, reading enabled me to do three things. First, it created an imagination where I could imagine amazing and wondrous worlds. Secondly, it filled me with curiosity and wonderment about another world, about other worlds. And thirdly, it gave me the gift and love for learning. And so, um, many years later, when I became a teacher, and I wasn't particularly skilled as a teacher, as a young teacher, but the one thing I did know, and that was I was determined to share this experience with every student that sat in my classroom. The second memory that sits with me is the memory of a young Form 1 boy in my class in deep rural Zambia. The memory of this boy reading his first book. The look on his face uh, was so amazing because he suddenly realized that he had the key to another world. And just as much as that magic um, stayed with me, the beauty of being able to impart this, not only to that boy, but to many other students, in fact, was something that has convinced me that we need, in fact, to find ways of sharing this with every child in this country. Now, today we live in democratic South Africa, and there is no doubt that since 1994, we have made many, uh, many a progress, we have improved on many fronts, but at the same time, we know that we face deep and complex challenges. We know that the road we travel on hasn't come to an end, and that more challenges arise than we actually had anticipated in 1994. In the heady days of 1994, we imagined a different world, a world that would not only be better, but where social justice would prevail and a more decent world. And I think we know as well that we are not there yet. But that world will not come about because we simply imagined it. We have a responsibility to make that world happen. And that dream, in fact, can be fulfilled. So, there are two things that I want to um, raise this morning. One is the obligation that we have at the present, not just simply to sit down 
and fold our arms and say, well, we can't change these things. It's impossible. It's too overwhelming. We must avoid that paralysis, in fact, because what we do today directly shapes the kind of world that the next generation will inherit in the future. What we do and what we don't do shapes that world. And so I believe that this generation has a moral obligation not to sit on its hands, but to actively engage with the present in ways that will shape in a positive fashion the world of tomorrow. So, what is my idea? It actually is quite a simple idea. We have in South Africa thousands of talented young people at our universities. We also have millions of children in our schools. And the idea that I want to put forward this morning says this. Let us find ways of enabling the young, talented undergraduates at our universities to go into our schools and read to our children. Now, in that simple idea is contained some profound notions. While it is important for us to get the issue of texts, textbooks, desks, chairs, etc., right in our schools, because schools can't operate without the basic infrastructure. But sometimes I think we lose sight of what education is all about. And one of the challenges I think we have in this country is how do we restore the love for learning? How do we bring children into the magic of learning? And so, drawing on my experiences, both as a child and later on as a student at university, I remain convinced that if we can impart this magic, this gift of reading, to our young children in schools, we can begin a significant transformation in our schools that will constitute the basis for then building our schools as places where children not only enjoy it, learning, but begin to cultivate the habit of the love of learning. Now, while we think about the future uh, in the 21st century, we know a lot of things that will happen. But we also know that there are many areas that remain un unexplored, that the 21st century is being shaped at this very moment. And we also know that there'll be areas of knowledge that will expand that we haven't even thought about today. But the one thing we do know is that anybody facing this brave new world will need imagination, curiosity, and the love for learning. And through this national movement of reading, where we get our undergraduates go into schools and read to children, to young children, on a regular basis, will plant the seed of that transformation. Because I can guarantee you, 
And I base this not only on my experience, but the experience of many others, that reading, in fact, constitutes that starting point. That reading fires the imagination, opens up new worlds, and ultimately uh, makes us, in fact, into learners. And so, what do we need to do to achieve this? First of all, I think we need leadership. In other words, the institutions of higher education should accept that they have a role to play that goes beyond their current functions. But secondly, we need, in fact, to remind ourselves that South Africa will not be built just simply by harking on the past or, in fact, saying that the problems are too complex. Each one of us has an obligation to contribute to the building of this country that we imagined so powerfully in the 1990s. And I am sure, in fact, that when young people are given this opportunity, they will respond. And so, getting universities to become involved in this will be one of the most powerful contributions institutions of higher education can make in transforming our educational system. As I said earlier on, we have an obligation as members of this generation to ensure that we leave a legacy to the next generation. What could be more powerful than the gift of reading? Thank you.